Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for uh, another video where today I'm going to be comparing up the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 to the Sigma 16mm f1.4. Now both of these are obviously fast primes, both are wide angle, and both are for APS-C. So if you're an APS-C shooter and you're torn between these options, or you're just bored with nothing better to do for the next 10 minutes, then this video is for you. Yes, it is. Now, let me just start this by uh, comparison by pointing out that, of course, these have different focal lengths. I'm kind of hoping you've already worked that bit out by now on your own. I know 3mm doesn't sound like much, but when you're short to begin with, uh, um, you know, short in focal length, 3mm is quite noticeable. You know, the Sigma produces a diagonal field of view of 83 degrees, while the Viltrox stretches that out to 94. It's the equivalent in a full frame of a 24mm versus a 20mm. Now that might make the decision of which one you choose for you. The next question is mount availability. Now, if you're an E-mount or an X-mount user, then great news, you basically have the choice of either one. If you're a Z-mount user, then unfortunately you're stuck with the Viltrox. If you're an EFM, L-mount or Micro Four Thirds user, then you're stuck with the Sigma. And if you're an RF user, you might want to go and put the kettle on. In terms of price, the Sigma is around $375 or £360, while the Viltrox comes in at $430 or £420, making the Viltrox around 13% more expensive. Now the question is, what are you getting for the money? Both lenses are practically identical in size, even very similar in weight, with the Viltrox being only 15 grams heavier at 420 versus 405 of the Sigma. Both lenses have 67mm filter threads, and both are made with a mixture of metal and plastic in their construction. Although the Viltrox just looks more metally, and arguably more premium looking. Now, both barrels are pretty much half filled with manual focus rings. The Sigma's focus ring is rubberized, which I personally prefer, over the Viltrox's metal, plastic, I, I can't even tell what it is. Both turn fairly smoothly, although the Viltrox is more damped, but the Viltrox's is linear in movement, while the Sigma's focusing speed will vary depending on how quickly you turn the ring, which I don't like. However, the focus ring is the only thing on Sigma's barrel, while the Viltrox has a dedicated declicked aperture ring, which you might love, you might hate. But you certainly won't hate the fact that neither of these lenses seem to suffer much from focused breathing. Both lenses carry pretty silent AF systems, and both systems appear very quick and responsive. However, I would give the edge to the Sigma, as it appears marginally faster overall. Moving on to image quality, sharpness between these lenses is a bit of punch and counterpunch situation. At f1.4, the center of the Sigma is very sharp, whilst the Viltrox's is a hair softer. However, the Sigma sees a noticeable drop in sharpness into the corners, whereas the Viltrox holds onto the corners quite a bit better. Stopping down to f2, the Sigma sees a slight improvement across the frame, with the center now being excellent, but the corners still lagging way behind, and they don't really start to come good until around f4 onwards. Whereas the Viltrox sees a big improvement in the center at f2, which brings it to being very sharp right the way across the frame. So overall, I would have to give the Viltrox the overall win in sharpness. However, vignetting is marginally better controlled on the Sigma when you have in-camera corrections turned off. If you turn them on, the gap becomes huge because there are no in-camera corrections available for the Viltrox, at least not that I'm aware of at the time of me recording this. Flare isn't too bad on the Sigma, but it does appear slightly better controlled on the Viltrox. And it's a similar story with Coma for you astrophotography shooters. But Chromatic Aberration is slightly in Sigma's favor. Both have a hint of it wide open, but the Viltrox's green fringing looks a bit stronger. By F2 though, both lenses look great. So overall, whilst both lenses have their plus points, and both are very capable, wide, fast primes, on balance I would probably give the edge to the Viltrox. However, that obviously comes with the caveat of a 13% higher price tag and a focal length which some users might just find unusable. 
That's not to say the Sigma's a bad lens, far from it. And if 13mm is too wide for you, then you're not going to be disappointed with this lens. But personally, between the two, I'm leaning more towards the Viltrox. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If either of these lenses do tickle your fancy, there are links in the description. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.